When an archaeologist finds something, that's only the first part of the discovery process. The second part is working out what they've found, who made it, when it was made, and the story behind it. Often that's a lot more difficult than finding the artifact was. Dealing with mysteries is all part of the job when you're an archaeologist or historian, and we've seen plenty of mysterious finds come to light in recent times. Let's check them out together. Stonehenge. The 4,500-year-old stone circle in Wiltshire, England is one of the best known and most studied archaeological sites in the world. After so many studies, you'd have thought that we've found out everything there is to be discovered about the site. But that isn't the case. In November 2021, the results of a new study into four Neolithic-era chalk plaques that were found in the vicinity of Stonehenge between 1968 and 2017 were published. The patterns on the plaques were long thought to be meaningless scribble, but scientists from English heritage now claim that the plaques, which might predate Stonehenge by 500 years, contain secret cultural data. Advanced image techniques have revealed the presence of geometric designs beneath the visible scratches and shapes, one of which is a twisted cord of a kind used in Neolithic-era farming. The artists who made these plaques weren't scribbling. They were creating art, and were apparently inspired by the everyday objects around them. Still, though, there's much we don't know. We now know what these Neolithic-era Brits were drawing, but we don't know their motivations for doing so. A little over 10 years ago, scientists became aware of a bizarre corridor of glass in Chile's Atacama Desert. The shards of glass cover an area of over 50 miles and are sometimes up to two feet long. The glass isn't flat or perfectly formed. It's often found folded, warped, and twisted into unnatural looking shapes. It took a full decade to work out where the glass came from, but experts think that they now have the answer. If they're right, these shards were created by a comet that hit the ground and exploded here thousands of years ago. That's the latest theory, replacing previous ideas that the glass was the result of volcanic activity in the region, or perhaps ancient grass fires. The key to the discovery was identifying tiny fragments of minerals inside the glass and proving that the minerals come from non-terrestrial rocks. Those minerals include troilite and cubonite, both of which are often found inside meteorites. To create glass, the comet must have exploded with such ferocious force that it melted the sand of the desert. You'll find many an ancient burial mound in Ireland, but not everything that looks like a burial mound actually is one. Some of them are sweat houses, an ancient and curious Irish tradition comparable to a rural sauna. As recently as the early 20th century, Irish people would take all their clothes off and step inside one of these structures with the intention of either curing their illnesses, experiencing hallucinations, or doing some deep thinking. There are plenty of examples of sweat houses to be found, including a cluster of them in County Leitrim, but their history is poorly understood. That's why the Leitrim Sweat House Project was created in mid-2021 and set off on a quest for knowledge. The oldest of the sweat houses in the county is thought to have been built during the 17th century. Like all the others, it's built into a hillside, with the location chosen specifically because it's close to a water source. Heat was created inside them by burning wood or turf and blocking the entrance before returning an hour or three later to let out the smoke and crawl inside with users staying in there for as long as they could bear the heat. Any impact they had on anyone's health would largely have been down to the placebo effect, but people continued to use them for three centuries. Finding a 2,000-year-old dagger would have to be considered a good day's work for an archaeologist, but in the case of this particular 2,000-year-old dagger, it turned out to be just the beginning of the story. The discovery of the dagger in Switzerland in October 2021 was a clue that eventually revealed the presence of a previously unknown Roman battlefield. It's thought that the blade, along with coins, fragments of shields, slingshot stones, and shoe nails, were all left in the ground after a brief skirmish 
between the Romans and a local tribe a little over 2,000 years ago. The site is in a remote southeastern corner of Switzerland, close to the Kropses Gorge, and has rarely been visited by archaeologists in the past. Based on the evidence, the Romans were probably the aggressors in the battle. The locals were probably surrounded on all sides and pinned down by catapults and slingshots. Emperor Augustus issued a decree that this part of Switzerland should be brought under Roman control in the year 15 BCE, so the battle might have been the result of a small Roman army following his orders. Making pottery was one of the earliest forms of artistic expression that our ancient ancestors developed. Pottery making was, and still is, a skill that has to be taught, and the best way to teach multiple people the same skill at the same time is to hold classes. Here's evidence of a pottery class being held on the Scottish island of Orkney 5,000 years ago. These fragments of pottery, which were found at the Ness of Brogdar on the island, still bear visible fingerprints left behind by the people who made them. Some of the prints belong to adult men, whereas others were made by children and young teenagers. Archaeologists claim that this is evidence of experienced potters demonstrating the art to novices or perhaps to their children. Hundreds of pieces of pottery have been recovered from the site as part of an ongoing project that began in 2003. But the findings about the fingerprints weren't made public until October 2021. Of all the fingerprints that have been identified, not a single one belongs to a woman or girl. Historians are open-minded about whether this indicates a gender-based division of labor and tasks on the island all that time ago. Early November 2021 saw the publication of a new study into the Quatemoc headdress. The study is full of surprises and concludes that the artifact isn't really a headdress, was never worn by an Aztec ruler, and might not even have been made in Mexico. The provenance of the headdress has always been dubious. There's no record of its existence prior to the 19th century when art dealer Eugene Bobin told Maximilian, the then emperor of Mexico, that the headdress belonged to the final leader of Tenochtitlan, that was Cuauhtémoc, who was executed by order of Hernán Cortés in 1525. A carbon dating test was carried out as part of the new study, and the results suggest that the headdress was likely to have been made somewhere between the 18th and 19th centuries. The materials used in its construction probably come from the Amazon. It might still have been made for someone of importance, but is more likely to be part of a scepter than a headdress. Based on the balance of probability, it now seems possible that it's a hoax created by Boban to extract a higher price from the emperor when selling it to him. The ruins of the Racton Monument in West Sussex, England, aren't technically a new discovery, but there's been a recent focus on the location after numerous reports of ghostly goings-on in the vicinity. Although it's a well-known landmark in Chester, the history of the monument is mysterious. Most sources say that it was built in the 18th century after being commissioned by Lord Halifax for unknown reasons. The building came to be viewed as a folly, although the lower half was briefly used for hosting banquets. Local legends say that it had become a brothel by the 19th century, although there's no reliable evidence to support this idea. By that point, the building had already survived an order for it to be demolished in 1782. The ghosts people claim to have seen in and around the monument range from the chilling to the absurd, with a disembodied face said to appear in the window hole of one of the upper floors and several sightings of a spectral tractor in the fields around it. The most recent stories, which were investigated by a local newspaper, claim that bricks fly through the air at the site of their own volition. Nobody can say with certainty how long humans have enjoyed drinking wine, but it's safe to say it's been several thousand years. The art of winemaking was already well established when this recently discovered winemaking complex was built in Yavne, Israel. Archaeologists found the complex in October 2021 and think it's around 1,500 years old. There are five wine presses at the site, along with storage warehouses, kilns for making clay vessels for the wine, 
and thousands of pieces of those vessels. Based on an assessment of the scope and scale of the operation, experts think that it could probably produce about 2 million liters of wine every year. That's an industrial quantity that suggests that Yavna was a massively important production center for wine during the Byzantine era. Not all the wine that was made here stayed here, though. It was a light white wine of a kind that was popular around the Mediterranean and was probably exported to Greece, Turkey, and Egypt. It might have made it all the way to the south of Italy. Drinking wine was about more than being sociable back then. Wine was cleaner and safer than water, so it was even fed to children. There's a very controversial new train line being built in Mexico at the moment. It's nicknamed the Maya Train and will loop around the Yucatan Peninsula. The reason it's controversial is that it will destroy countless ancient monuments like the ones that were discovered standing in the railroad's path in October 2021. Archaeologists surveyed an area that covers just one-sixth of the land that's been set to be torn up and built over and found more than 2,500 pre-Hispanic structures, plus a further 80 ancient burial sites. Those discoveries include what are thought to be the remains of some of the earliest Mayan thatched roof houses ever found in Mexico. There are also ceremonial platforms and countless examples of Mayan pottery. The train line will run for 950 miles, with the first 140-mile stretch running from Palenque to Esarcega. This area was heavily occupied by the Maya during the peak years of their civilization about 3,000 years ago. Descendants of the ancient Maya still live in the area and have filed legal objections to the railroad plan, but those objections are expected to fail. The train line will be built, so it becomes a question of how many artifacts can be taken away from the area for preservation before that happens. Kings and queens wear crowns. That's a very ancient tradition, and its origins are unknown. We usually imagine those crowns as being gold, but that wasn't always the case in ancient times. Here's a 4,000-year-old crown from the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh that's made not from gold, but from copper. It was discovered in the village of Chandayan in January 2021. It's likely to be a relic of the Indus Valley civilization, which once controlled land that's now split between India and Pakistan. This is only the second crown ever to be discovered at an Indus Valley site, and the only one to be made of copper. The other is silver, and isn't thought to be quite so old. While it's impossible to say whether the person who wore this crown was a king or queen, they would certainly have been held in high regard. The crown is inlaid with carnelian and fiance, both of which were considered precious stones back then, just as they are now. The artifact was still attached to the skull of its owner when it was discovered, but identifying the owner has proved to be impossible. The history of China goes back thousands of years, and there are some parts of the enormous country where it's almost impossible to dig into the ground without finding traces of past civilizations. That was proven to be true yet again in July 2020, when a cluster of tombs was discovered at the Mao Zhuang site in Gangshu, South China. The tombs and the assorted artifacts and relics inside them are believed to be around 4,000 years old, placing them between the Neolithic era and the Shu Dynasty era. There are 65 tombs in total, all of which appear to have been undisturbed prior to the arrival of the archaeologists. The quality of grave goods varies drastically between the tombs, with some occupants laid to rest surrounded by nothing more than stone tools, while others went to their graves with elaborate ceramics and jade carvings. Excavation work is still ongoing at the site and has thus far cleared an area of more than 7,000 square feet. The archaeologists at the site hope to build a full picture of the cultural history of the Pearl River Delta region and expect to be there until at least 2023. Hairstyles tend to go in and out of fashion over the years, but you might have heard it said that the one hairstyle that's never truly been fashionable is the mullet. That might not be entirely true. 
Mullet haircuts might be considered passe today, but they might have been all the rage when this tiny copper statue of an ancient Celtic god was made 1,900 years ago. The style is unmistakable, short at the top and long at the back, and amused the archaeologists who discovered the artifact in Cambridgeshire, England in February 2021. The two-inch tall figurine even has a mustache to go with its mullet, prompting comparisons to 1980s football or hockey players. While it obviously isn't a statue of a sportsman, pinning down the exact deity it's supposed to represent has proved to be tricky. It was initially thought to be a figurine of Cernunos, a Celtic fertility god, but historians now believe it's a statue of a different, previously unknown god. The artifact was probably once attached to the handle of a spatula, used for mixing medicines. Nobody really knows how people tended to wear their hair in England 1,900 years ago, so perhaps the mullet was all the rage. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications, and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you soon.